Okay, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter two is compound interest. All right, so when a bank pays compound interest, it pays interest not only on the principal amount that was deposited, deposited into the account, but also on the interest that has accumulated over time. Suppose you want to deposit some money into a savings account and let the account earn compound interest for a certain number of years. The formula for calculating the balance of the account after a specified number of years is, and we've been given the formula here. The terms in the formula are as, are as follows. So basically, these are the terms. A is the amount of money in the account after the specified number of years. P is the principal amount that was originally deposited into the account. R is the annual interest rate. N is the number of times per year that the interest is compounded. T is the specified number of years. So we have to write a program that makes the calculation for you or for us. The program should ask the user to input the following. Let's just fix that. Um, okay, so we're going to ask the user to enter the amount of principal originally deposited, deposited into the account, the annual interest rate paid by the account, the number of times per year that the interest is compounded. For example, if the interest is compounded monthly, we're going to enter 12. If the interest is compounded quarterly, we're going to enter 4. And then the number of years the account will, will be left to earn interest. So once the input data has been entered, the program should calculate and display the amount of money that will be in the account after the specified number of years. And it says in note, the user should enter the interest rate as, as a percentage. For example, 2% will be entered as 2, not as 0 0.02 or 0 0.02. Then it's the job of the program uh, to divide the input by 100 to move the decimal points to the correct position. Okay. So we're going to calculate um, the compound interest. We're going to ask the user for some information and we've been given a formula and we're going to pl plot whatever the information the user gives us in the formula to calculate our interest. Okay, so let's start. Let's ask the user for the below information. So the first thing we want to do is ask the user for the amount of principal originally deposited into the account. So basically, how much are you starting with? So let's call the input function. The input function is going to allow us to ask the user for something, right? So it takes in what you want to ask the user. So let's ask the user to t please type in, or let's just say, how much are you starting with? And the input function is going to pop up some kind of text box. And it's going to um, ask the user, allow the user to type in something. Now, whatever the user types is going to be returned back to us as a string. And so when it's being returned back to us, we need a place to start. So this is going to be, um, if you look at it, it says um, A is the amount of money in the account after the specified number of years, right? So we can call it, actually, no. So A is not what we're going to, principal. A is our principal, sorry. <laughs> so let's call this user principal, right? Because it's over here it says P is the principal amount that was originally deposited into the account. So that's what we're starting with. So user principal. We can even call it principal, it doesn't matter. So user principal is going to store um, basically what the user is starting with. Now the input function always returns a string by default. But since we're going to be performing some math with this value, we need to make sure that this value is an actual number. Input function returns a string, so we need to make sure it's converted to a float. Um, floating point because the principal can be $2,050 or $2,581.52. So we need to make sure it's a float. And so I'm going to wrap the float function around everything that the input function is going to return to us as a string to make sure that it's an actual floating point value. So that's our user principle. Um, the next thing we need to ask the user is the annual interest rate paid by the account. So again, the input function to ask the user what the annual interest rate. So the input function is going to pop up some kind of text box, allow the user to type in something. Whatever the user types is going to be returned back to us as a string, we need a place to store it. What is being returned is the annual interest rate. So we can call it annual interest rate. No, we don't need to add user to it. So let's just call it annual interest 
rate. So again, we're going to be performing some math with this, so we need to make sure that that value is an actual floating point value, because the interest rate can be 0 0.05, it could be 2.8, it could be a floating point value. And so I'm going to wrap the float function around everything that the input function is returning to make sure it's a, it's a float. Now, we're going to come back to it. Let's, let's do it now. If you scroll all the way down, it says, it gives us a note and it says, the user should enter the interest rate as a percentage. For example, 2% would be entered as 2, not as 0. Point, sorry, not as 0 0.02. The program will then have to divide the input by 100 to move the decimal point to the correct position. I mean, let's keep that in mind. So we're going to do something with this. Let's keep that in mind. We're going to get that, to, you know, get to that later. Let's continue the program as uh, as it's asking us to do. So the next thing we should do is to make sure we we ask for the number of times per year that the interest is going to be compounded. For example, if the interest is compounded monthly, we should enter 12. If the interest is compounded quarterly, we should enter 4. So again, input function, we're asking the user to please, or let's just say how many times will the interest be compounded. So we, we need to store that in a variable, right? The input function is going to return that to us. So let's call this number of compounds. And we need to make sure that whatever the input function is being is returning to us is an actual <clears throat> number, right? In this case, it's going to be an int because if we're dealing with an how many how many times it's going to be compounded, it's going to be the two times or sorry, yeah, it's going to be the two times or four times or 12 times or it's going to be an int. So instead of a floating point value, let's wrap the int function int function around it to make sure this number is an actual int. Okay, so let's clean up, uh, do a little bit of cleanup. So I don't know if you can see this line over here. This line is a guide for me to make sure that I'm typing 80 characters in a line. It's a Python standard to always type 80 characters in a line, so I want to follow that and stick to that. And so that means I need to break this line into two. To do that, I'm going to close this string and then concatenate it with the beginning of the string. And then I'm going to break it somewhere around here. Now, to break a line in Python, you have to type in the backslash and hit enter. If you are in parentheses, you don't need the backslash, but it's a habit of mine, so I'm going to make sure I stick with it. And I'm, I'm going to type in the backslash. If you type in the backslash, no problems there too. All right, so now we have our number of compounds, and then we, we made sure that it's an int. The next thing we want to ask is the number of years the account will be left to earn interest. So input function, we ask the user, how many years do you want to leave compounding, I guess? Um, and so the input function is going to ask this. Uh, or, or pop up a text box a lot easier to type in something and it's the input function is going to take whatever it types and return it back to us as a string what is being returned to us is um, number of years interest is compounded so I guess um, let's call this uh, years of compounding so years of compounding is going to store how many years you know the amount is going to be left in there. Um, if we're dealing with years, then it's going to be an int. So we need to make sure that whatever is being returned, because the input function by default always returns a string, we need to make sure that it's converted to an actual int. And so I'm going to wrap uh, the int function around that. Because if we're dealing with years, actually, you know what? We should make it a float, right? Because someone can leave it there for two and a half years, right? So let's make this a float wrap the float function around everything that the input function is returning, right? Because someone can leave it there for two and a half years. Makes sense. Okay. So make that a float, not a years of compounding. This line is exceeding this, this line here, line eight is exceeding this gray line here, which is a guide for me to type 80 characters on the line. So I'm going to break it. I'm going to close the string and then concatenate it with the beginning of the string. Before I break the line, I'm going to type in a backslash hit enter. Okay, so now I have all the full values. 
we have our formula so we can put it all together okay all right so let's put the formula together we will get back to this hint uh, sorry this note here and we'll fix that in a sec let's put together the formula so a is the amount of money in the account after the specified number of years right so let's create a variable let's call it amount of money um, uh, amount of money um, after compound something like that after oops after compound right you can call it whatever you want I like long variable names it just makes my program clear right, so we're going to set it equal to this formula here so P let's start with P P is the principal amount that was originally deposited into the account we have it here user principal so we have our user principal and then times we're going to multiply it by one oh, sorry in parentheses one plus R R is the annual, annual interest rate we have it here annual interest rate so times R and then divided by lowercase n so n is the number of times per year that the interest is compounded number of compounds we have it here okay 